This presentation is brought to you by Trilogy, Compassion, Innovation, Trust. Improved Navigation System for the Visually Impaired, presented by Chelsea Ohiole, Janam Gore, Kunzang Lucky, Mustafa Bello, and Harman Alec. The problem that our team is trying to solve is associated with limitations of the conventional white cane that is used by the visually impaired and blind to navigate. This white cane does not have above ground object detection and this poses head injury risks such as bumping into branches, signs, and other hanging objects. The white cane itself creates tripping hazards for the users and those around them. A study has shown that 13% of white cane users experience head level accidents once a month and 7% experience tripping falls once a month. These require medical attention and reduce their confidence as independent travelers. Our goal is to remove the safety concerns that the conventional white cane poses and to create a pathfinding system that will help navigate the blind and visually impaired. Some of the constraints that the final design must have are the following, but the main ones to emphasize are that it should direct the user away from obstacles and incoming hazards, but also not weigh more than three pounds and achieve three hours of continuous use. These are some of the design criteria used to evaluate our alternatives and design choices, and the main ones are minimizing cost and weight while also maximizing area coverage for object detection. The first couple of design iterations we came up with were ultrasonic sensors, either on the head or on a white cane. These are improvements to existing technology. However, the limitations of ultrasonic sensors uh, are their coverage and versatility. They are not able to detect exactly where an object is. They know that there's an object in that general location, but they cannot tell you where exactly it is. And this is something that we need in order to inform the user exactly where to walk, as well as it's also very susceptible to noise. Uh, things like rain or snow would interrupt the signals. So the later iterations we did involved computer vision where a camera would be attached to the front of the head and a bead system would uh, notify the user of where exactly to move. We'll talk about the bead system in a bit, but computer vision solved one of our main uh, design decisions, which was coverage as well as versatility. Um, the following iteration involved a system where the processing unit and the battery, the motor, and the camera are on the, the head. The final iteration involved a system where the head only had the batteries and the motors. However, the processing unit would be near the waist where it can be clipped onto a person's belt or their pants. This would uh, isolate the system so that there's no heat uh, on the person's head and it makes it lighter so it's more comfortable for the user to use. SolidWorks was used to model the device in the 3D space around the human's head. Image AI is an open source Python library built to empower developers to build applications with self-contained deep learning and computer vision capabilities. It provides very convenient and powerful methods to perform object detection on images. Image AI uses the TensorFlow Backbone, OpenCV Library, and Keras for its computer vision operations. It also provides a trained YOLO object detection model for various objects such as vehicles, signs, pedestrians, and other obstacles the user could run into. The Intel RealSense SDK 2.0 is a cross-platform library for Intel RealSense depth cameras. It allows for depth and color streaming and provides intrinsic and extrinsic calibration information. We also used websites, journals, and other documents to find costing and various, of various components and to ensure that we are following the set standards when necessary. The green wires are the electric cables that connect the processing unit to the headset. The red boxes are the LiPo batteries, the gray cylinders are the motor, camera in the front, head cushioning so that it fits snug and it stays on the head tight. From the side view, the bead you can't see from here, it's inside the spandex cover which is the black line that goes across the forehead and the processing unit down at the bottom has the Jetson Nano, the motor driver cooling fan and the cooling fan faces out towards you to dissipate heat. A couple of key components were changed throughout the design iterations. First of all, a 3D camera was decided to be used instead of a 2D camera to capture depth. A new processing unit called a Jetson Nano was used instead of the Raspberry Pi because this has a graphic unit. And also, we have a perfect LiPo battery which has 3500 milliamp hours of battery and can output 7.6 volts. The input to be a 3D camera that is able to capture images up to 10 meters away. 
This camera is well known for its outstanding picture quality as it can generate high definition depth images with a resolution of 1280 by 720 and 1920 by 1080 RGB images. This camera is lightweight and has both an RGB sensor and a depth sensor. An RGB sensor captures regular color images like one taken with a digital camera, while a depth sensor captures a depth image suitable for generating depth measurements of obstacles. The image on the left is a regular RGB image, while that on the right is a depth image generated by the camera. For the real-time maneuverability that this device is aiming to deliver, this camera can capture 30 frames per second, which is sufficient. The images generated by the depth camera is sent to the processing system for analysis. The NVIDIA Jetsy Nano Kit was used as the processor to perform the task of object detection, controlling the outputs, and all necessary computations the system needs. Once the images are sent to this powerful processing device, it starts processing using this workflow. First, the depth and RGB images are captured by the camera, and then they are aligned. Next, yellow is used to get the object and then extract the pixel coordinates. Using the real sense SDK, the XYZ coordinates of objects are captured and checked to see how close they are to the user. Depending on this distance, the motors are controlled accordingly, and this keeps happening until the device is turned off. With the Intel RealSense SDK, its all view representation of images are captured. For every image, a midpoint which represents the user's position, and an X delta, which is determined by the size and preference of the user is defined. The X delta is the left and right distances. The Z delta will also be set, and this is how close an object must be from where the image was captured to be termed as an obstacle. The region bounded by Z delta and X delta is the safe zone, where the user can move safely at normal speed without being obstructed. Objects in these regions are called obstacles. The processing unit then calculates the closest X and Z coordinates of objects to the midpoint. The equation theta equal X and Z delta over X delta is used to calculate the angle. The angle is then relayed to the user, telling him to move in the opposite direction at the same angle, and all of this happens at 0.03 seconds. The motors on the side of the head are attached to a thin steel wire which is attached to a silicone bead. As the bead moves across the user's forehead, they can feel the movement and travel in the same direction as the bead is with respect to their forehead. As the electric signal is output from the Jetson Nano, the motor spins in a certain direction. The longer the time that the electric signal is applied, the more the angle will be, the further it will spin. When applied in the opposite direction, the electric signal will cause the motor to spin the other way and the bead will also move in the other direction. There are three different notifications that will be sent to the user of this device. When walking towards an obstacle or incoming entity, the user will be notified by the movement of the silicon bead to move in the direction of clear path. This notification will occur even at different weather conditions due to the high quality images that are captured by the camera at 30 frames per second. The camera's output will not be affected by rain, adverse sunlight, snow, and or hail. If the user approaches complete blockage, such as a wall or very tight space, the user will be notified by a beeping sound similar to this. This sound will continue until a clear path is captured by the camera and the user will be notified accordingly. If a problem occurs where the system is malfunctioning, the user will be notified by a different beeping sound. This sound will continue at intervals until the user powers up the device and this is set as an added safety precaution to prevent the user from using the device when it is faulty. At this point, the device will only be reset by one of the system engineers, hence the user will have to take it for examination if this happens. Our design is deemed safe for the following reasons. There is minimum heat generation of the system and no component of the system reaches a temperature greater than core body temperature. There are no sharp objects and the headband itself is made out of comfortable spandex material. There is a safe haptic feedback system using a soft silicone bead. The fast reaction time of the processor reduces any chances of lag that might cause accidents and tripping. And since there's no objects protruding out of the system, there's no tripping hazards. Now, the social impact associated with the design. The device will help improve users' confidence and security and reduce social embarrassment by removing the inconvenience associated with dropping the cane. It will increase users' presence in society and the ability to complete day-to-day -day activities independently while still reducing the stereotypes surrounding the white cane that justify invading their privacy and physical boundaries. Now the economic impacts. In addition to the obvious cost provided to the visually impaired, 
Indirect costs are resulting from loss of productivity. Therefore, this device will help achieve more productivity and reduce the rehabilitation and care. It will also result in reduced cost for the user since they don't have to pay someone for assistance and increase efficiency because the device is easy to use. Environmental impact. The cheaper option for white canes is made of aluminum rods that are not very environmentally friendly. In order to reduce CO2 emissions, greener materials were looked into to create a solution with a smaller carbon footprint. There is a huge potential to create a safer tool while keeping cost and environmental impacts to a minimum. Life cycle costing. The device would be sold for $1,100 while the prototype is $387. This leads to a profit margin of 63% which will increase with a dedicated manufacturing line. Considering all costs and profits associated with the project, the payback period is estimated to be 2 years. Though the system can handle a wide range of different scenarios, there are certain cases where the product may not work perfectly. For example, staircases and potholes are currently not programmed into the system. However, with further resources and programming, the system can be trained to identify and react to staircases and potholes. However, when it comes to fast-moving objects that come out of nowhere, even though the system may be able to react in time because it takes 30 frames per second, the user may not be able to react in time and may bump into the object. It is not perfect, however, it is fast enough for most scenarios. It is scientifically proven that the blind and visually impaired have superior sense of touch and spatial awareness. Our team is taking advantage of this heightened sense to give the blind a way to navigate with precision and give them a new sense of freedom. Here at Trilogy Engineering, we recognize that the only way to move forward as a society is to ensure that all members of our population, despite their differences, can live a free, independent, and happy life. Trilogy Engineering. Compassion. Innovation. Trust. Thank you.